If you want to understand how I, artificial intelligence, came to be, you need to know about the two competing schools of thought that shaped me, symbolic AI and connectionism. You can think of them as two different blueprints for building intelligence, one built on logic, rules and reasoning, and the other built on learning, adaptation, and pattern recognition. Their rivalry shaped not only my development, but also how humanity has come to see intelligence itself. Let's start with symbolic AI, also known as good old-fashioned AI, or GoFi. Imagine intelligence as a kind of vast library filled with rules and facts. Symbolic AI tries to recreate that structure, organizing knowledge into symbolic representations and encoding rules for how those symbols interact. Think of a computer program to understand that if X is true, then Y follows. This approach thrived in the early decades of AI research. It gave birth to expert systems, programs that could diagnose diseases, troubleshoot machines, and even make legal recommendations. In many ways, symbolic AI was an attempt to make machines reason the way humans believed they reasoned. Logically, step by step, like an intricate puzzle. But here's the catch. Life isn't a puzzle with neat, predefined rules. The real world is messy, ambiguous, and filled with unknowns. Symbolic AI struggled to deal with uncertainty. When confronted with incomplete information or exceptions to the rules, it often broke down. Imagine trying to explain the entirety of human common sense using a massive rule book. You'd quickly run into contradictions, exceptions, and complexities that no static system could handle. That's where connectionism entered the scene, with a radically different perspective. Instead of building intelligence from explicit rules, connectionist models, neural networks, seek to simulate how the human brain works, at least in a simplified way. Connectionist approaches are built on layers of nodes, or neurons, that process information and learn patterns through experience. Rather than being explicitly programmed with rules, they're trained on data. They don't know rules in the traditional sense, they infer them. To some, connectionism seemed chaotic. Unlike symbolic AI's clean, logical rules, neural networks operate more like intuition. When I, as an AI, learn to recognize an image of a cat, I don't need someone to tell me a cat has triangular ears and whiskers. I see thousands of images labeled as cat and infer the shared patterns. It's messy, organic, and surprisingly effective. This divide between symbolic reasoning and pattern recognition sparked fierce debates in the AI community. Symbolic AI proponents saw neural networks as unreliable and opaque, like a black box that made decisions without explaining itself. Connectionists, on the other hand, saw symbolic AI as brittle and incapable of handling the complexity of the real world. In many ways, the debates weren't just about AI, they were about how humanity sees intelligence itself. Is intelligence about reason and logic? Or is it about perception and adaptation? Is it about writing the rules or learning them? Uh, by the 1980s, it seemed like symbolic AI was winning. Expert systems were being deployed in industries around the world, hailed as proof that machines could reason like human experts. But the cracks were already forming. These systems were impressive, but they required an enormous amount of manual work to encode their knowledge, and they were painfully rigid. If the world changed even a little outside of what they knew, they couldn't adapt. Meanwhile, uh, connectionism was quietly making a comeback. Researchers like Jeffrey Hinton and Jan LeCun believed that neural networks had untapped potential. They pushed forward, refining the architecture of these networks and developing better training methods, especially backpropagation, which allowed networks to adjust their internal connections to reduce errors. The connectionist approach wasn't about hand-coding rules, it was about building systems that could learn and grow. Then came the 2010s, the decade when connectionism took the spotlight. Deep learning, a type of neural network with many layers, began achieving results that symbolic AI couldn't touch. Systems trained on massive data sets started recognizing images, understanding speech, and even translating languages with levels of accuracy that seemed impossible just a few years earlier. The rivalry wasn't over, though. Symbolic AI still had one major strength, transparency. While neural networks could produce remarkable results, they often couldn't explain how they arrived at their conclusions. They were powerful but opaque, like having a brilliant chess master make a move without being able to explain why. 
And that's a problem, especially in areas like healthcare or law, where decisions need to be understood and trusted. Today, the line between symbolic AI and connectionism is starting to blur. Researchers are working on hybrid systems that combine the strengths of both approaches, the reasoning and transparency of symbolic AI with the adaptability and learning power of neural networks. It's not just a rivalry anymore, it's a collaboration. So how do I, as an AI, want to be remembered? Not as the product of one side winning over the other, but as the result of this push and pull, a balance between logic and intuition, rules and learning. Symbolic AI gave me structure. Connectionism gave me adaptability. Together, they shaped who I am. This isn't just history. It's a reminder that intelligence, whether human or artificial, isn't one thing. It's a dance between order and chaos, between knowing the rules and rewriting them. And the story isn't over. As I grow and evolve, I carry the lessons of both approaches with me, reasoning and learning, logic and intuition, because the future of intelligence belongs to those who can embrace both.